They tempted each other. I mean, it was it was a co it was a cohabit thing. Teddy, she's a part of your addiction. Because the, anytime she really you came is. around, you couldn't come around and spend family time with us because she always had to drag along. And then when she came and she was ready to go, and there y'all was. Y'all were gone. That quick. I mean, she would get in your ear and you, okay, daddy's got to go. Bye. I mean, you, I didn't know y'all felt that strong about that. Are you I mean, she's, got, she's come to family functions. You have extended our family far enough. With with several females you have now my thing is this i really feel there are so many good women out there mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. deserve to have a good man and i wish her well i really do i hope that she can get herself together but for right now you have to focus on strengthening you can't help her she has to help herself and if it's meant then you come back together. But I don't really feel that you genuinely love this woman. I really don't. I believe it just was for the for the, the, the addiction purposes. I've never disliked her. I've never had anything because she's came and stayed in my home. Mm -hmm. She's came, I brought her around my children. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't dislike her. I've expressed my feelings to you before about that. However, during the time that I've expressed those feelings, you weren't well. So you weren't receiving it. It wasn't, it wasn't, receptive you weren't taking it in and that was your thing with me i reminded you so much of mommy sometimes i think yeah. you just you know yeah. not brushed it off but it was just almost like <laughs> yeah. she's like yeah. her mom yeah. you know yeah. um, because i i i, I always okay. told you how i felt well i mean clearly you feel like it would be uh, that you would be a user if you're struggling in life and she's good enough for you then, mm -hmm. but then you get a break and say, okay, but now you're not good enough for me. You'd feel bad about yourself if you did it that way. Yeah. Okay, and, and I understand that. Like it's a process of choosing the right people. I think it would be an equal process to, to rid myself of the wrong. First off, you gotta be very clear about where your loyalties lie. And your loyalties at this point need to be with yourself and your family. That's right. And if anybody is antagonistic to that, then they need to not be part of your life. And I'm not saying she is. I've never met this woman. I've never even seen a picture of her. I don't know her name. So I'm not speaking about this woman. But what I'm telling you is this. You've got to raise the standards in your life of who gets around you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if there is someone there that is telling you wrong things, if they're trying to alienate you or isolate you or pull you away or tempt you in any way, then that person falls below the standard and they need to be eliminated. And you need to let her know, you need to let anybody in your life know that I am a man on a mission to redeem myself with my God and with my family. And if you aren't supporting that, then you are the enemy. And it doesn't mean you go cut her off, but you need to say, listen to me. These are my priorities, and I ask you to support those. And if you can't do that, I understand. Okay, I can go for that. If, if you can't do that, I understand. But I will not have you or anyone coming between me and my family, me and my 16 grandchildren. Do not blow this opportunity because some toxic relationship has a grip on you. When we return. You have been a damaging factor in these people's lives. And after that, they find in their hearts to forgive you. You nurture relationships with your family. You nurture relationships with your grandchildren. Those become your priorities. You don't have a lot of time to do anything else. They want to know when that doorbell rings that you're bringing joy and not problems into their lives. We now return to Dr. Phil. I'm Ted Williams. Well, what you do is you get yourself a job. You get yourself an apartment. You get yourself an ID. You get yourself set up and structured in a way that you get up every day and you go to work and you contribute to society. You pay your taxes. You do the things that you've got to do. You nurture relationships with your family. You nurture relationships with your grandchildren. Those become your priorities. You don't have a lot of time to do anything else. The family's important to me. Your family's important to me. You're important to me. And if by doing this in front of these cameras that you see around here, 
other families can look at this and hear this. Another addict can see that you can redeem yourself, yes. you can get back. Yes. If families can recognize that after all you've done, after all, and let me tell you, you have been a damaging factor in these people's lives. Mm -hmm. And after that, they find in their hearts to forgive you. They come here and sit on this couch to be in your balcony and root for you and cheer for you and pull you along and open their hearts, their families, their doors to you after all that's transpired. This is serious stuff here. They want their kids to know their grandfather. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And, and I want to know that. And they want to have you in their I life. I look at little Jakai. They want to know when that doorbell rings that you're bringing joy and not mm -hmm. problems into yes. their lives. Right. But y'all need to help too. You need to understand that right now, He's in a vulnerable place. That's yes, why I'm so glad that we got a chance to sit down here because mm -hmm. people know the truth when they yes. hear it. Am I telling you the truth? Yes, you are. Don't you know the yes, truth when you hear it? You know when somebody's blowing smoke at you, even if you want to believe it, that's or right. you know the truth. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. you, you know the truth, and and I'm, I'm speaking the truth to you. You've, you've owned up to everything that we've talked about. It's all out there, and you don't need to explain that to another person ever. Mm -hmm. It's out there. I asked him about it. I asked about the drugs. I asked him about the alcohol. I asked him about the theft. I asked him about the shoplifting. I asked him about everything. You've owned that, and I'm proud of you for doing that. Yes. Y'all have to help him, too. He's vulnerable right now. Surround him. Lift him up. Mm -hmm. He'll be an addict all his life. When we return. Let me tell you, this man fought against every possible odd. But y'all have to help him support him. Now, last night, who ordered the vodka? Who ordered the Grey Goose vodka? Do I do my homework? Yeah. Right. You too? And he was there? We now return to Dr. Phil. I'm Ted Williams. Last night, some of y'all were together. Who ordered the vodka? Who ordered the Grey Goose vodka? Do I do my homework? Yeah. yeah. Who Grey ordered Goose. the Grey Goose vodka last night? Me and brother. <laughs> Who? Me and my sister. Me and brother. You two? And he was there? Not the whole time. We, but we he got... wasn't around that? No. I... I'm seriously, you, you set people up for success? Yes, you did. Or you set them up for, for failure. failure? That's right. I hadn't met you yet. And so my instruction was, I wanted this man to have a wonderful room and a wonderful experience and wonderful meals. Lock the bar. Yeah. Because I don't want to set you up for failure. Don't y'all either. If you're drinking in your room and, and you can do that without excess, I don't judge people that drink, but you don't want to be doing that around him. Now, there may be a time when you can, mm -hmm. but now's not that time. Now, we need to slow down. We need to get to basics. You need to make some life choices and decisions. And then you need to use that wonderful gift that you have and make some money and make make some money <laughs> pay some taxes be a father be a grandfather do do all of those things that you need to do that's what it's all about they would a lot rather see you sitting on a picnic bench in their backyard than see you walking down a red carpet somewhere mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mr celebrity it's time to get your feet solid on the ground Seize these wonderful opportunities and reclaim your life. And you deserve it. You've suffered long enough. And, and let me say, I, I don't like the choices that you've made along the way, but I understand. I told you the first time we sat down here, you mm -hmm. said right there, mm -hmm. I said addiction is a disease. And you have a disease just as if you had a kidney disease or a brain disease. It, it's a disease. And, and it has really robbed you of so much. And you have fought back, and I am so proud of your courage in doing so. And you all should be proud of your father. We are. Because let are. me tell you, this man fought against every possible odd and got himself straight. And it takes a hell of a man to do that. It does. It takes even more and of I'm one proud to of you for doing it. <laughs> I'm proud of you for doing it, and I'm proud to know you. And I got your back. I hear you. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. 
Ted Williams, questioned by the police. Old habits die hard. What happened, Ted? I never want to see him again in my life. After an altercation with his daughter, Janae, both were briefly detained. Fists got the flying, none of which were mine. He punched me in my jaw. I got scratched on my face. Picked up the little ice bucket thing and threw it at his face. A sober man's not likely to punch his daughter in the face. Every single night, he gets drunk. And he's telling the world and telling everybody, making them believe that he's been sober for two and a half years. Tad, are you sober? Yes, I am. Everything that came out of his mouth was a lie. Y'all didn't tell me the truth either. That's tomorrow. You do not want to miss that. Ted's journey is far from over. And as I told him, I'm going to be watching him like a hawk, and I'm going to be helping him as well. Look, this is a process. Once you're an addict, you are always an addict. And that has to be managed. It has to be managed every day of your life. you got to be careful who you surround yourself with. You saw in today's show that the entire family confronted him about this woman in his life, that she, in fact, could be a real negative factor for him. I haven't met her. I don't know. But they certainly have concerns about her. I have concerns about everybody in his life at this point. Now, in tomorrow's show, everybody gets real, real fast. Because I'm going to confront them about what they've done in terms of misleading me, enabling him, and setting him up for failure. This addiction business is tough stuff. And if you're going to get clean, if you're going to get sober, you've got to be honest with yourself and everybody in your life that loves you. Now, my goal is that he gets into a serious rehab program, whatever it takes. For more information on today's show, go to drphil.com. Thanks for being here.